This is the handheld gaming PC I'm designing that I've dubbed the Zendek. It's based on a widely available Ryzen 7 mini PC and I'm taking you guys along for the ride as I design and build this from the ground up. Today I'm going to get the display hooked up to the PC in the most compact way possible and then we'll test the power management from my previous PC handheld project to see if it's powerful enough to keep this one running. In the first episode of the series I showed you guys the rail mounting system I've come up with that helps mount the display to the housing and allows me to attach the PC directly to the back of the display in a nice little compact package. These rails should be one of the only structural things that need to be changed to fit a different brand or model of PC. The original housing for the mini PC had a small fan mounted on the bottom side of the mainboard that I presume is only there to cool the SSD. We could probably get away without it, but having a bit of air moving around inside the housing should help the power management stay cool, and if it helps cool the SSD too, that's just a bonus. So I modelled up the fan and printed a little bracket that mounts it between the PC and the display driver board using two of the threaded points on the display to mount it. It's a tight squeeze, but it does just fit in there. One of the next problems I ran into is the HDMI port on the display. It is directly behind the USB ports on the mini PC, giving us very little room to attach the cable. I could just remove the ports from both the mini PC and the display and fit an FFC connector like I did for the NUC deck, but that was one of the more intimidating steps, so I'm hoping to avoid that if possible. I designed this funny little adapter that plugs into the HDMI port and breaks the signals out to an FFC connector that is in line with the HDMI port on the mini PC. I've copied the pin out from the Adafruit HDMI adapters, so you can use the 90 degree adapter on the PC end to create a nice compact link between the two with just a ribbon cable. A little 3D printed cover on this top connector should make it look just like a small dongle is connected, so I don't think it detracts from the overall look of the device. The next step in connecting the display to the PC is power. This display is powered by a USB-C port that also happens to be directly behind the ports of the mini PC. I considered making another right angle adapter, but really we should only need two of the pins from this connection, so let's grab the multimeter and see if we can find a good spot to connect power. Set your multimeter to the DC voltage setting. If your meter isn't auto ranging like mine, you'll need to choose a suitable range for the 5 volts we're expecting to see. The casings of all the connectors are usually grounded, so I'll place one of my probes here and search around near the power connector for an area that looks like it's part of the power supply. This capacitor appears to be connected to a fairly large looking plane on the PCB and it is quite close to the power connector, so there is a reasonable chance this will have 5 volts on it. Using my other probe, I will carefully touch this side of the capacitor to check and see if there's any voltage present. When probing around PCBs, ensure you don't accidentally bridge any connections together, as there is a good chance this will cause damage if the PCB you're checking is powered. Looks like we've found a good spot to connect a wire for the 5 volt input. We could just solder a ground connection onto the casing of the USB-C port, but I'd rather find a nice spot on the board if we can, so let's do that now. I'm going to remove the power from the display now and switch my multimeter over to continuity mode. If you aren't sure how to do this, check the manual for your meter as they are all a little different. I'm going to place my probe back on the connector housing, as we already know that's a good spot for a ground connection. There's a little test point here next to the connector that looks like it might be connected to the ground plane. So let's poke it with the multimeter and see. Yep, looks like we've got very low resistance from this point to the connector housing. So this will be the perfect spot for our ground wire. Here's a quick diagram showing where I'm connecting power on this particular display, just to ensure it's perfectly clear for those following along at home. For now, I'm just going to connect the other side of these wires to a USB plug but I will eventually have a connection on one of the PCBs to provide power to the display. The display's touch signal is also a USB-C connector, but fortunately I'm still able to plug it in without any part of the PC getting in the way, so I'll just use a regular cable for now. With all of that sorted, I can bolt the PC to the back of the display and fire it up as a nice little package. I've printed a couple of basic stands just to stand the display up and keep the PC off the table, and it looks like it's all working nicely. Now that I can easily power this thing on again, it's time to think about power management. My plan is to use the exact same system that I developed for the NUC deck, but with an added 19 volt boost stage, since we don't know if this PC can run on lower voltages like the NUC could. I've picked up a basic 19 volt boost module, and I've made up some wires to connect the power management from the original NUC deck through the boost converter, 
and into our new mini PC. I've also made an extension for the controller USB connection, so we can plug that in and use the inbuilt battery management screen on the NUC deck for an accurate runtime estimate on this machine. I am planning to use a slightly higher capacity battery in the Zen deck, so the actual runtime compared to what we see here could be anywhere from 15 to 30% longer, depending on what size batteries I end up being able to fit. The main aim here is just to ensure that the battery management isn't going to be overwhelmed by this PC, as it can draw about 10 watts more than the NUC deck when flat out. I'll probably often have the TDP capped to extend runtime, but I want to make sure that it can run uncapped without causing any damage. For the test, I wanted to be certain that I was applying the maximum load possible, so with the CPU uncapped, I fired up Prime95 and let it fully load the system. I let it run for a couple of minutes and found the peak current draw was around 3.7 amps, leaving us with a runtime of about 45 minutes. With the extra capacity I should be able to squeeze into the Zen deck, we should see more like 50 minutes to an hour at full load, which is roughly comparable to the NUC deck's runtime. I did try out a few games off camera and found that with the TDP limit turned all the way down to 5 watts, the expected runtime will be around the 3 hour mark on the new battery. Some games probably won't run well at 5 watts, but this PC is much more efficient than the old NUC, so I will have to do some tests in the future and get some runtime estimates for you. Now is probably a good time to thank this project sponsor, PCBWay. They've been a massive help in getting this project started, so make sure you go and check them out for all your PCB machining and 3D printing needs. If you're interested in keeping up with the project, please consider subscribing and make sure you leave any suggestions or thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching.